Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brandon and if you're anything like myself, it really does feel like all that we've been hearing about these days on the financial news here on YouTube, we're seeing more and more videos or really whatever source of information you use these days. The trending topic is that recession is coming. Now, that's exactly what I'll attempt to address in this video. I'll go ahead and give my overall thoughts and just my perspective on this upcoming recession. And hopefully it will be a really valuable video in particular for any investors out there who are a little bit worried, a little bit concerned as to what they should expect or what they should be doing with their portfolio. I've actually been getting a ton of questions recently and in particular a really good question in that should I be buying stocks knowing that there's this recession on the horizon, knowing that there's a recession looming? So I'll attempt to do my best at uh, tackling all of those questions. I will just remind you, as always, that this is just my opinion here on the channel. This is just my perspective and you don't have to agree. You can feel free to agree or disagree. And if you do disagree, that's completely fine. I'd actually encourage you leave a comment down below, you know, go in the comment section and give a little reasoning why a little backing behind why you think that way or why you disagree with uh, my views here, because not only because then not only I can go check them out and read them, but other viewers at home, they can also learn from the comment section as well. So I would encourage you to do that. And as always, if you do enjoy these videos, feel free to give it a thumbs up. But the first point that I guess we'll chat about in this video is just to stay calm, right? Stay relaxed and don't panic because I know that when it comes to recession, everybody thinks or most people think back no longer than 10 years ago, just over a decade ago, to the credit crisis, to the big financial crisis, the implosion of the housing market where the financial system just went, they just tanked, people were losing jobs left and right, firms going under. It was a terrible, scary, and devastating time. Now, let's understand right off the bat here that the financial crisis, the credit crisis was a very, very devastating and a very, very rare occasion in terms of the size of that recession. In fact, you know, you look back at the data, there's a reason why they call it the Great Recession in that it was the second largest recession we've ever seen, only next to that of the Great Depression back in 1929. So you know, don't get it twisted, don't get it confused here that all recessions are devastating and that the economy is going to implode, the global economy is going to be going down because really recessions do come and go all the time and they're rarely as bad as what we saw just about 10 years ago. And the odds of seeing back-to-back -back recessions of that am amplitude or all of that size back-to-back, -back, in my opinion, very unlikely and although we will enter a recession i'm not trying to say here don't expect a recession or you know it's not going to happen it will happen it will come but if i had to go out and place a bet or speculate on the size of this next recession i'd probably lean towards it being nothing close to as bad as the previous one in fact, it'd probably be like many other recessions, a lot of normal recessions, I guess we could call it, where, you know, not only are these common, but they're actually quite healthy. They're healthy for our economy. They're healthy for any market, really, to have these periods of cool off where things do slow down. It's really unsustainable for whatever we're talking about, for something to just keep climbing, climbing, climbing. We do have these periods. It's part of a normal cycle. But my first uh, advice or my first you know, piece of information to you is don't panic because of our recent history, because the likelihood of something that large happening again, probably quite, quite low, at least in my opinion. Now, to build off that, if you are a long term investor, and you're somebody that is looking to grow your wealth over the long term, and that's an important part there, a long term investor, there's no other way to look at it then seeing these recessions or these periods where the economy is slowing down and the stock market is correspondingly, correspondingly selling off, there's no other way to look at that than simply a sale or a discount on stocks. Really, when you look back at the history of the stock market, when you look back 
in terms of decades or you look on long periods of time, the best times to purchase stocks where you're getting the most value, you're getting the cheapest prices on these quality assets are during these depressed areas. It's where the market sells off when investors are panicking, when people are freaking out and CNN and Fox and Bloomberg are lighting up the television screens. Those are truly the best times to go out and buy stocks. You know, if you ask yourself, you can buy a share of Apple today for $100 or a share of McDonald's today for $100 or a year from now or two years from now, you can get that exact same share for 20%, 30%, 40% cheaper. As a long-term investor, that type of thing should really light your eyes up. That should be the time where you're ready to deploy money into the stock market and really just pick up on those discounts on, again, quality companies which do fall during a stock market crash, which do fall during a recession. Those are really the best times that we should be looking to actually buy stocks rather than sell stocks and panic and kind of get ourselves out of the markets. Now, there is a very select few or a handful of investors or people out there where this doesn't apply. And if this is you, it's very important to classify yourself as this because if you are somebody that does need your money over the short term, if you have your investments, uh, let's say you've built up a nest egg of a million dollars, you're into your retirement years here, and you know for a fact that you're gonna be peeling that out to finance your retirement, maybe you have that money stashed aside for a uh, cottage or whatever the case may be, if you know that you will be needing this money in the short term, Somebody in this case does have to approach a recession differently than a long-term investor. And when I say long-term investor, I typically like to think here 10 years, 15 years plus. So you can kind of do the math there depending on your age and decide whether you consider yourself a long-term investor or you know you'll be needing the money shortly. Because if you're somebody that does need the money shortly, like I said, you do have to tackle this differently. You may not be able, you don't have the luxury of waiting out uh, recovery or kind of living through a recession if and when it does happen. And you very well may run into the case where you look at your million dollar portfolio and you need to start pulling that out and it's now worth 700,000 or $600,000. And if you're forced to access that money, well, guess what? You then do have to trigger your losses and essentially sell out and accept those losses, which is really one of the worst things. That's one of the last things that you want to do as an investor. It kind of takes us here full circle to the topics and videos that we talk about on this channel. Things like setting your asset allocation and having a proper strategy where you're mitigating and managing your risk. If you know you'll be needing the money here shortly, Leading up to this recession, you do have to rethink, or I would suggest you rethink your investment strategy in terms of your exposure to the equity markets. You could look into some other investment products which are uh, lower risk, which have a lesser chance of, of depreciating or losing value when the economy does start to slow down. That is, again, for a very small percentage of people, but for the vast majority, but for the rest of people who that doesn't apply to, you should be totally inviting this as a screaming, screaming discount, as a screaming, screaming buying opportunity to go out and add stocks to your portfolio for the long term. Now, as for the most asked question here that I've been getting recently in, should I be selling my stocks or not buying stocks, knowing that there's a recession coming up? I'll share with you here a funny post that I found on Reddit. Uh, I sold all my stocks so that I have money to buy more stocks when the recession hits. That was in 2015. I only need the stock market to drop by 33% so I can buy in exactly where I was four years ago. I know that if I hold out, I won't lose money in the long run, right? And we see here below timing the market in a nutshell, folks. And that is so true. And that's really the way that I do approach this topic and this question when I'm asked, you guys already know my stance that time in the market beats timing the market. And despite hearing about all of these yield curve inversions and everything that the news is kind of spooking you and scaring you with, we still have no idea when this recession will eventually come around. And I'll tell you, there's experts, there's economists, there are people that do this for a living who struggle and fail to anticipate when 
the recession will eventually hit. And if you do look at the description of a recession, I'll pop it up. I don't have the exact one off the top of my head, but something along the lines of two consecutive quarters here of declining GDP growth. By definition, when it comes to a recession, we can only justify, we can only clarify by looking back. And in the meantime, if you're somebody that wants to just wait till things are in the clear, you just want to sit, sit on your cash and just say, listen, I'm going to wait till the time is perfect. I'm going to wait till the market drops. I'm going to find that bottom. You may very, very likely find yourself missing out on a ton of potential gains. And I mean, that Reddit post I did find quite funny. It was like 2015, the exact post for this one. I kid you not, I know many investors personally who for years now have been sitting on cash. I'm talking here 40, 50%, sometimes more of their portfolio sitting in cash waiting for this recession because we're 10 years into a bull run. You know, we're due for a correction. We're due for this big market crash everyone's been waiting for. And in the meantime, they've missed out on some tremendous gains. And what's to say that this market doesn't continue running up? I mean, if you had to ask me again, I'm not here to speculate and make a prediction here, but for all we know, the markets could continue pushing up for a year, for a couple years. There could still be a ton of great growth in the meantime. So my philosophy, and it's really not my philosophy, it's the philosophy of many successful investors like you know the Buffets out there. There's tons of investors that will preach that time in the market truly does time. <laughs> time in the market truly does beat timing the market. It is a very, very difficult thing to do. And I would highly encourage anybody who does stand behind that belief to just leave a comment down below to help out other investors, because I know when you're starting out, it's something that a lot of people don't buy into. They don't believe that time in the market beats timing the market. Um, so do leave a comment down below if you truly do believe in that. I would rather stay invested unless there is a blatant red flag as to why I should be out of the market, but I'd say 90% of the time more, I'd rather stay invested. And especially for a buy and hold investor like myself, who's just in their young phases and just accumulating, accumulating, I'll gladly hold my stocks through a recession, through a market downturn, and simply take that as an opportunity to buy more stocks. Now, I have been a little more picky with the stocks that I pick. I mean, I'm not out here being like a crazy guy just buying shares of every company because I do think that it's times like now that you have to be cautious with the types of stocks you pick. And, you know, feel free to check out our investing academy, check out our membership group. If you're interested in my exact stock picks and my portfolio, that's that first link down below. But I've absolutely been a little more picky with the stocks, uh, really trying to find value that I still do believe is out there you guys know that i've actually bumped up my weighting to bonds uh, nothing more than like 10 15 percent of my portfolio as i am a younger investor but that's how i'm personally approaching this in terms of the stock picking and that's something that i'd kind of stand behind really no matter what the news is saying or what type of videos are popping up on youtube that's just kind of the philosophy that i like to take when it comes to investing in stocks now the last point in just wrapping up this video pertains to kind of just your finances in general. And that's very simply to just be smart. All right. Just be prepared, knowing that in time, whenever it does happen, we will enter into a recession. And especially if you are somebody that let's say works in like maybe you work in a volatile industry, maybe you're someone whose job isn't super secure. And especially if you're somebody that has a uh, family to care for. I mean, it's not really a situation that I find myself in, but if you're somebody that knows, if you assess that you're in a situation like that, people like this do have to be more cautious, more prepared than the average person out there. Because if you do face the risk of, let's say being laid off, right? You do face the risk of seeing your income cut down. You do have to be proactive knowing that we're leading up to this recession in doing something maybe like banking up your emergency fund, right? Maybe, maybe making a conscious effort to just top up and just gradually increase that fund in the case that you do have to tap in and you do need to access that in terms of your investment portfolio. If you can take profits on some stocks that have done quite well and you don't want to give it back to the market, if you have some really nice capital gains, that's of course something you could consider. 
Again, maybe even looking to shift into some safer investments in general, especially if you're somebody that doesn't have the luxury of time and just being overall smart about the loans you take on, just making sure that you're living within your means, but for the most part, just living and investing normally. That's really the way that I would approach it is just continue doing what you're doing, but be smart and be prudent because again, recession is just a normal part of the cycle. That's what happens. And in my opinion, if you can approach it with the proper mindset and the proper understanding that over time, the financial markets, the investment markets do appreciate, they are your friend over time. And if you can take a step back and really just grasp that, I don't really see a need to be worried about that. You just need to be prepared. You just need to be smart and you need to be educated on what to expect. And hopefully this video kind of shed some light into that, especially again, if you are um, new and a little bit worried. Um, a bonus one here is don't trust, don't ever trust what you hear on CNBC or Bloomberg. Okay, these guys are not your friends. They really... You know, it's kind of weird how it works. And it's funny, I see a lot of people like, oh, I love watching these uh, programs and you know, this is my go-to source. These people don't have your best interest at heart. They really, really don't. Uh, don't forget that at the end of the day, they're just businesses and they're in the business of getting views and getting advertisement dollars. And when they get the chance to go out there and strike some emotion with a big headline, they will pounce on that and they will do it. And many investors that do follow the advice that they hear on these news outlets, they do get burned. So do be picky and do be particular in terms of where you go for your information. But my perspective on this, my opinion, and I guess you could call it advice to anybody out there who's open to it is to just keep a level head, just stay prepared invite it as a very nice buying opportunity when it comes for the time being i'm happy staying invested but that's just me for my personal situation and i forget what the other point was just don't panic um pretty much those were the points that i wanted to cover in today's video so that'll wrap it up for the video if you enjoyed you can feel free to give this one a thumbs up and like i said do leave a comment down below especially if you uh, agree or disagree i'd love to hear the different thoughts on this topic down in the comment section below if you're not already subscribed we post a video every week so subscribe and if you'd like to check out our investing academy, we have our stock market course. We have our private membership group. Those are both available for purchase down in that first link in the description below. So do feel free to go check it out. But as always, I thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that it helped and I'll see you in the next video.